Hello everyone, uh, I am Dr. Pramod Badal, Assistant Professor in the Department of Orthopedics, BP Koyala Institute of Health Sciences, Dharan. Today we'll be discussing on the approach to a case of low back pain. So to start with, uh, we should understand low back pain is a leading cause of disability. The only illness occurring more frequently than low back pain is the common cold uh, since 1980s. Maybe before that, when there used to be some other uh, infective uh, diseases more common. The lifetime prevalence of low back pain is 75 to 85 percent. That is, 75 to 85 percent of all individuals will experience low back pain at some point of their lifetime. Uh, either in the form of acute low back pain, uh, that is uh, one which is last for less than six weeks, or subacute, subacute from six to twelve weeks. Uh, these acute and subacute low back pain cases usually recover within uh, two months in 90% of cases. What is chronic low back pain, which lasts for more than 12 weeks, is associated with significant physical, psychological, and social disabilities, and has a lot of psychosocial, psychosomatic um, associations uh, with the chronic low back pain, as shown in this Glasgow illness model of low back pain disability, uh, in which, uh, apart from physical problem, the emotional distress, illness behavior, and sick role have also a lot of role in these cases. So to classify the risk factors of uh, low back pain, we have to classify into different uh, clusters. First, the indivi individual fact factors. Uh, there are genetic factors playing role. It is, the incidence is highest in the third decade of life and the overall prevalence increases with age until 60 to 65 years and then declines. It is more common in females. Likewise, some morphological factors also play a role in low back pain. For example, a case of spina bifida or a case with parse defect like spondylolysis uh, were also supposed to be uh, very important risk factors, though the research has shown they have uh, uh, quite less significance in causing low back pain uh, in new literatures. The psychosocial factors are very important, as I told, in uh, chronic low back pain cases, especially depression and anxiety uh, can lead to transition of the acute low back pain to chronic, causing a lot of pain and disability for a longer time. The occupational physical factors are very important risk factors. The heavy physical work, like overextension, repetitive motion, twisting, bending, lifting, and vibratory uh, type of work have uh, been associated, have been found to be associated with increased risk of low back pain. The clinical evaluation of low back pain is very uh, critical in coming to a diagnosis. Uh, the history is uh, very important to see, uh, and we have to see the onset of symptoms, uh, whether it is less than six weeks or 12 weeks, uh, which are transitory type of acute or subacute back pains uh, versus chronic low back pain, which usually lasts for more than 12 weeks. Likewise, we ask the patient for the location of the back pain, the quality and intensity of pain. The intensity of pain can be judged by visual and analogy score that we'll discuss in the later slides. The aggravating and alleviating factors have to be asked. If the pain is aggravated by movement, uh, it could be a mechanical type of back pain or a back pain from degeneration of the uh, disc. Whereas if it increases with rest, then it could be because of infections or some malignant malignancies uh, such as metastasis. Likewise, uh, we have to take the history of radiation to the leg. Uh, as in case of uh, prolapsed intervertebral disc, uh, the acute onset of low back pain radiating to the leg has to be asked as it is associated with uh, nerve root compression. Uh, likewise, especially in chronic low back pain cases in elderly, neurogenic claudication is a very important clinical feature 
we have to ask for the pain in the limb, in the limbs, especially while standing or walking, uh, and gets relieved with uh, sitting down or stooping forward. Uh, is a case uh, of uh, lumbar stenosis, most probably. So this has to be asked in the history very uh, clearly. Likewise, to rule out some complicated type of uh, issues, which could be um, uh, associated with uh, poor prognosis and potentially need early intervention, we have to ask for any uh, symptoms of some red flags, namely uh, bowel and blood involvement that points towards uh, compression of the cover equina uh, by the disease pathology. Likewise, fever, night sweat, white plus and weakness of the body point towards uh, problems uh, associated with infection or malignancies uh, such as metastasis, which is quite common in the spine, in, uh, especially in old age. Likewise, history of comorbidities, past surgical history, medications, psychosocial history, employment status are the important points to be noted while taking history. And we have to quantify the uh, pain and disability using visual analog scale and ODI, that is OST Disability Index, that we will discuss in the later slides. In the physical examination, we start examining the patient in standing position, followed by sitting down on the chair and then lying down position. The skin has to be observed uh, clearly for some hyperpigmented pigmented patches like cafe all these spots as seen on uh, neurofibromatosis cases. Likewise, gait has to be observed, any abnormality in the gait. Uh, likewise, the attitude of the uh, overall attitude of the body, right from the position of the head, the shoulders, the pelvis, the contour uh, of the back the, in the sagittal and coronal plane. Uh, likewise, the um, attitude of the hip and knee joints have to be observed. Likewise, uh, tenderness uh, in the spinous process can be felt uh, with uh, pushing the spinous process forward or with sideways compression or sometimes uh, if there is no uh, tenderness with these maneuvers then we can do pumping tenderness. Likewise, we have to feel for the sacroiliac joint tenderness and uh, we have to measure the range of movement of the spine which is restricted in disc pathologies and facet arthropathies. So these diagrams, the ones on the top, they show uh, the abnormal contour of the back. It is, uh, there is a curvature on the back. Likewise, in this case, the attitude is little disturbed. There is flexion of the hip, there is flexion at the knee, and there is flat back. Uh, so it suggests some compensatory efforts at the level of hip and knee because of the problem of spine. Because the, the lower picture, so the range of movement, the forward flexion of the spine, so the patient should be able to go anywhere below the knee and the lateral flexion of the spine. The special test begins with a neurological examination. Uh, we test for the sensory, motor and reflex uh, examinations. Uh, based on the dermatom and myotomal distribution to see for the uh, nerve root involvement because of the spine pathology. It is followed by some tests done for, uh, especially for acute uh, back pain uh, cases. We have to do the tension signs. We have to check for the tension signs, like straight leg raise test uh, is seen here. The leg is kept straight, the knee should be we should make sure the leg is, the knee is straight, is in extension, and it has to be raised up until the patient feels pain in the legs. And uh, at which position, and we have to note the angle made by the uh, limb with the floor, uh, this angle. So anywhere between 30 to 60 degree, 70 degree is a, uh, indicates there is some knob root compression. Likewise, some other tests, uh, LASIK test or boasting test. Boasting test is done by compressing the uh, lateral hamstring at the level of popliteal fossa in order to uh, give a tension to the sciatic nerve. 
So my, this again reproduces the pain. Likewise, in cases of uh, uh, upper lumbar disc uh, diseases, we, we can do for this is the bursting test, and this is the femoral stress test for the cases with L2 to L4 uh, disc disease. The, the anterior part of the pain will be radiating to the anterior part of the lower limb, and you have to stress the femoral nerve by flexing the knee and extending, trying to extend the hip like this. So this is the femoral stress test uh, to check for the upper lumbar nerve roots. And the Adams forward bending test is a test done for scoliosis patients, especially in children. It, it is very important. Uh, Ganselin test, fiber test, Sober's test or modified Sober's test. These are the tests most commonly done for uh, inflammatory pathologies affecting the spine, such as uh, ankylosing spondylitis. So after detailed clinical evaluation, we should be able to classify the low back pain uh, into different uh, categories, whether it is spondylogenic back pain, that is involvement of the bony spine column, the sacroiliac joints or soft tissues like disc, ligaments and muscles, or it could be neurogenic pain, originating from problems in the cord or at the level of brain like uh, case of uh, transverse myelitis, uh, who usually present with a lot of back pain. Likewise, viscerogenic back pain, uh, in pathologies involving the kidneys or pelvic viscera, in the pathology of the lesser sac or retroperitoneal tumors uh, have to be ruled out uh, with the initial uh, evaluation clinically. Likewise, vascular back pain, especially the aortic aneurysm associated with peripheral, peripheral vascular disease, uh, can mimic this uh, disc disease, uh, especially can mimic this spondylogenic back pain because they have back pain, there's always a pain in the leg. So this has to be ruled out by a careful examination of the distal arterial pulses. Likewise, the superior gluteal artery insufficiency is often associated with pain in the buttock, uh, which is often confused with uh, spondylogenic back pain. So spondylogenic back pain is the, uh, forms the measure of the majority of the bulk of uh, the cause of low back pain. Uh, whereas sometimes even the psychogenic back pain uh, could be there. So, based on the initial clinical evaluation, uh, we can again categorize these spondylogenic low back pains into different um, pain patterns. The structural spinal disorders are associated with pain during movement of the spine, whereas inflammatory spine pain is mostly at rest and introduces with activity, like in cases of ankylosing spondylitis. Whereas in infective cases, the patient often shows some night cries and is often associated with some other features like fever, weight loss, decreased appetite, etc. Uh, and the weight loss and reduced appetite is also seen in tumors. Uh, the patient might uh, come with a history of uh, trauma to the back, leading to back pain, or sometimes there could be uh, fractures in, uh, of the vertebral bodies with trivial trauma, which is uh, often unnoticed, as in case of uh, elderlies with osteoporotic vertebral compression fractures. So, as we already discussed, we have to also assess the uh, red flags, meaning some of the conditions which are potentially more dangerous, meaning um, having bad prognosis or that need early intervention, uh, they can be categorized broadly into five areas like fractures, which are potential to produce instability in the spine, tumors and infections, which can, which can potentially cause knob compression and are often associated with uh, poorer outcome in the long run, inflammatory conditions and cordial syndrome, which, which is an orthopedic emergency and has to be uh, dealt with very early with uh, decompression of the knob roots, the cauda equina. Uh, there are some other uh, flags, yellow flags and orange flags being used in these days. Yellow flag meaning uh, the risk factors for long-term disability like psychosocial risk factors which are associated with attitude and beliefs of the patients. Likewise, the orange uh, flags 
which are the signs of more serious mental disorders that require referral to a psychiatrist before getting any intervention from the uh, spine surgeon or, or the orthopedic surgeon. Uh, some other flags like blue or black flags are also uh, in use these days uh, to indicate uh, patient at poor risk of work-related outcome. Uh, 